Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a upgrade to the Threadripper computer that I built last year. So we're going to be showing how to add a PCIe expander card for NVMe storage. As long as your motherboard supports bifurcation in the BIOS, because most of these expander cards, whether we're talking about the MSI Expander Arrow or a ASUS Hyper M.2 expander card, they are what I call dummy cards. They don't have a chip on them to self bifurcate the card. So basically bifurcation you need to split out the lanes so that you can do four, 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 four. So up to four NVMe drives in the slot. So common things I notice that people do wrong is they plug this into the wrong PCIe slot. It has to go into an X16 slot if you want to use all four drives. Otherwise, if you plug it into an X8 slot, for example, you're only going to be able to run up to two drives because each drive requires four lanes of PCI Express. Okay, just to kind of show the expander card itself. Now, this is this applies to every NVMe card, but in this case, mine came with my old Threadripper system. I'm just going to repurpose it with my new Threadripper system. So this fan shroud, because we're using PCI Gen 3, this isn't really needed because modern Gen 3 drives, like the Crucial P3, for example, uh, doesn't generate much heat. It doesn't use that much power. So this passive heat sink that comes with this is more than enough for all four of those drives. That's what we're going to be using. That way it's going to be fully passive. So let's go ahead and install these NVMe drives. So to install this, you're going to have to remove these four screws. And if, you're, if it comes with the PCIe plug, that's typically for the fan. I don't think that's really necessary. I'm not going to plug that in. If it doesn't work, like if it's not detecting my drives, then I will plug this in. But I, th I don't think this is necessary. Most NVMe cards, even like the Gen 4 and the Gen 5 ones from Asus, they don't even have a six pin, so I don't think that's really necessary. So the nice thing about this is it has thermal sensors to measure the temperature of each one of these drives. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna add four of the same drive. This is good if you were gonna do like a RAID 0 setup with these, um, but I'm not gonna actually use RAID. I want four separate drives. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna open one of these up just to get an idea how this is going to go. The nice thing with these crucial M.2s is they do include a screw. If you lost one, for example, you can use the one that they include. So we're going to put the first one in like this. And it looks like we're going to have to move the little mount thing there. So we're going to have to adjust all of these. These are all in the max size. We're going to have to move them down. To adjust these down from here, so there, first what you'll need to do is these come pre-installed with a screw. So we'll need to remove the screw. So I'm going to do that for all of them. These are torqued in there really good. It makes like a pop sound when I... It's a really loud noise that that made. Anyway. So those are out. Now what we have to do is have to get, get these out. To get these out, you want to use a flat head. Let me see if this will work. Okay, well actually you can use a Phillips head. So this, this will work. Because this is one, and it's like a cross pattern. So you can either use a flat head or a Phillips. A Phillips screwdriver like this, it'll go right in there and you can just turn it and it'll come right out. So that, that way, that's how you adjust these. So we need to move this down here because this is a 2280. 2280 is the standard size. So if we put this back in, see that's ready to go. So now we can put the screw back in. All right, so the first one's in. Now we need to get the other three adjusted. The modern expander cards are a lot smaller. They don't waste so much board space like this. 
Now, if you want to do raid, you can do raid. Threadripper supports raid. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just use the drives as separate for, for NVMe drives. But ideally, if you are going to do RAID, you do want the drives to all be the same speed. Ideally, the same exact model would be ideal, so there's no differences in speed and IOPS and latency and that sort of thing. Okay, so they're all in. So technically, I could just install it like this because this is just PCI Gen 3. PCI Gen 3 doesn't need uh, a heat sink. Definitely doesn't need a fan. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back on. So make sure, if you're still on that, make sure you peel off the plastic insulator to protect the thermal pads. This is one giant thermal pad, like so. All across, all four of those, that's two each. That's a total of eight terabytes of storage space. So that brings my total number of NVMEs on my Threadripper PC up to seven. because I currently have three of them in there. I've got two four terabytes. One is a Gen 4. The other is a Gen, well, they're both Gen 4, but one's like a slow Gen 4. It's a crucial P3 Plus. All right, so that's in like that. So you can see how they sit just to kind of show that there. So they're all in, they're all connected, they're all secured. So now we're ready to install this. Now to install this in the PC, you're going to need an X16 slot. The top one is always X16 for pretty much every motherboard that has a full X16 physical slot. Normally the graphics card would go there. So if you do want to use this or do something like this with four NVMe drives, in a regular consumer desktop, like a Ryzen build or an Intel Core build, you will need to use your graphics card slot and you have to move your graphics card down to like an X8 or an X4 because you do need, if you want all four drives to actually be detected, all four of them each require four lanes each. So this is four, eight, 12, 16. You need 16 lanes. If I plug this into the slot where my capture card is, that is an X4 slot. So if I plug this in, only the first drive will be detected. The other three will be invisible. They will not even be used because there aren't enough lanes on that slot down there for this to actually work. So I need this to be in the top slot because I know it's an X16. Now on this specific motherboard, the top is X16. The second one where my graphics card is, so this is the 7900 XTX reference card. This one is in an X16. Now, if I move this up here, because this is a triple slot GPU, I can't use the second slot. So I have to move it down to the second. Luckily for me, Threadripper has so many lanes that I've got X16 up there. I've got X16 right here. I have an X8, which is covered up by the GPU. So I, unfortunately, I can't use my X8. I've got an X4 where the capture card is because that only needs four lanes. Then I have an X16 at the very bottom which my Intel A770 is using. So I've got 16 on the GPU, 16 on the other GPU, and 16 for the NVMe card. And then four for the capture card. If you add USB 4, like a USB 4 add-in card, you would have to remove the capture card and use that, and you would have to use like an external capture card off of the USB 4 port. That motherboard will determine what you can and cannot do. All right, so once I have it installed, this is what it looks like. In my case, because the shroud with the fan was so big, I had to remove it anyway, because if I left it on, the fan would literally be rubbing up against the back plate of the GPU, so the fan wouldn't even be able to spin regardless. Okay, once you're in the BIOS, and this is gonna depend on what motherboard you're using in terms of how it will look, but this is how it looks on an Asus Sage workstation board. You're gonna to wanna to go to where it says onboard devices configuration, at least for this motherboard. Now, it might be that you need to go under PCIe subsystem. That's where resizable bar is turned on, but it depends, like I said, on the BIOS. So in this case, I have to go to onboard device configuration, and here you have to know which PCIe slot the, the NVMe card is installed in. So in this case, it's the very top one for me, so it's going to be the first one. So the G5 means PCIe Gen 5. Now, even though it's Gen 5, I only have a Gen 3 card in there and Gen 3 drives. So I'm not going to get Gen 5 speeds because I'm using a Gen 3 card. Even if I had a Gen 5 SSD, 
it's only going to run at Gen 3 because the card itself is only a Gen 3 card. This second one down here, this is where my graphics card is installed. Notice how it's X16. Then we have nothing because that's covered up by my GPU. Then we have the bottom slot, which is where the Intel one, this is a Gen 4 slot X16. So my Intel GPU is in that one. So we're going to go to the first one. And here, the options are X16, which is a default. That means all the lanes, all 16 lanes on that slot are combined. We're going to change this over to RAID mode. RAID mode, now, depending on your motherboard, it might say X4, 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 X4. That's what you're going to want to look for. X4, 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 or RAID mode. In this case, it's just RAID mode. The only other option is like GPU with M.2 storage. Now, it gives me a description on what this means. Notice what it says over here on the right. PCIe X16 mode, switch PCIe to X16. We don't want that. Otherwise, only one, the first M.2 drive will work. The other three won't work. So we got to change this into bifurcated mode, also called RAID mode, which says up to four SSDs installed onto the Hyper M.2. That's Asus's specific NVMe card. In this case, we're using an MSI one, so it behaves the same. It doesn't matter. Hyper M.2 X16 series card can be detected. GPU with M.2, we're not doing that. So that's what we're going to want to do. So we're going to save that change. And we're going to boot into Windows, and then we're going to initialize all four of these drives. Okay, now we're in Windows. And the easiest way to tell if all your drives are installed without going to Disk Manager, because we're going to go there in a second, you can just simply open up the Task Manager and verify your drives are present. So in this case, the new drives, assuming we are using blank new SSDs that have never been used before, they will show up without a drive letter. So in this case, I have disk four, there's no letter, which means it is unassigned. It's one of the four drives. And notice up here in the top right, CT2000P3 SSD. That stands for Crucial Technologies 2000, which is two terabyte P3. This is a P3 crucial drive and the capacity is 1.8 that's roughly two terabytes so i know that's successfully detected the second one disk five again the exact same drive same everything disk six is the third one disk seven is the fourth one so all four of them are detected as expected so now we're going to open disk manager so we've got four new drives as expected all four of them appeared and you can verify with task manager that they're present. They, none of them have letters assigned. Notice how these other ones, disk one, two, three, disk zero, these all have letters assigned. These are already existing drives. So my new ones on that NVMe card are four, five, six, and seven, and they're all identical CT2000 P3 because they're crucial two terabyte P3s. So um, now what we want to do is we want to initialize all four of them and we're going to use GPT. You do not want to use MBR. MBR is a legacy technology from the days of Windows XP, which has long since been replaced by GPT. So we're going to use the GPT partition table. Now we're going to click OK. So right here, disk 4, 5, 6, and 7. If I expand this out, we can see 3 is a crucial P3+. Plus. That's the 4 terabyte. That's a different one. But here we are. These ones that have this black line on them, they're, they're unused. So now, if you were going to do a RAID, you could do RAID. But we're not doing RAID. I want four separate drives, which is what I think most people are going to want to do. So here we just click on one of these. You can right-click and do New Simple Volume. It's going to walk you through the wizard. It's going to ask you to choose the minimum space, the maximum space. If you want to do separate partitions on the drive, you can do that. I'm not going to do that. So we're going to click Next. And then we have to assign the letter for this drive. J, K, L, M, I think is what I'm going to do. So we're going to do J, J, K, L, M, because all four of them are sequentially on the same card. That way it's easy for me to remember. So we're going to do J. Here you can do the file system if you want EXFAT. You definitely want, if you're on Windows, NTFS. FAT is typically for like uh, USB drives. So if you want to call this like game drive, data drive, whatever, you know, what I like to do, because I'm like a techie, I like to give it the name of the actual drive. So I'm going to call this Crucial P3. I can say Crucial P3 underscore one, indicating that it is the first one, because we're going to add like the other three 
which will have the same name. So Crucial, P3-1, perform a quick format, next, finish. So it's going to format that, and bam, there we go. So it appeared in Windows. So we can see there's, under this PC, the drive is recognized now. So now we're just going to repeat the same steps for the other three in that card. So second one, new simple volume, bam, there you go. I've just added four M.2 drives. Hope you guys found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.